Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Business leaders today remain focused on dynamic shifts in the talent landscape from where people work to having enough people with the right skills. How is technology evolving to bridge these gaps and help businesses adapt? With insights on the power of data-driven tech in today's talent market, Don Weinstein, Corporate Vice President of Global Product and Technology at NASDAQ listed ADP joins me to discuss. Don, it is great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Thank you, it's great to be back. Businesses across industries are facing a tight talent market. How can leaders address today's hiring challenges? Yeah, indeed. And despite anecdotes to the contrary, we still see a tight hiring market out there. So leaders need to take several steps to succeed. First, you need to continually assess your employment brand. Workers today continue to have plenty of options so they can be selective in choosing who they want to work for. So business and HR leaders need to look holistically at their workplace experience, which spans career growth and development, workplace experience, like the types of inclusive environments they are creating, as well as taking care of their employees' health and welfare needs. Additionally, with talent and labor markets still tight, businesses need to look beyond traditional hiring channels and get creative by tapping into adjacent talent pools that may not necessarily come with a traditional background for a role, but have a good fit and skills match that's close en enough to enable them to succeed, especially when given the right amount of training and support. What kind of role is human resources technology and data play to help bridge the gaps? Yeah, well, let's start with the first challenge, employment brand. That's one of the hottest areas of HR technology uh, and data right now, and that's employee sentiment analysis. Leading companies are deploying all kinds of survey tools and using other listening posts to tap into what's on their workers' minds and how is their employment value prop resonating. This is inclusive of classic tools like onboarding and exit surveys that take the pulse of their workforce, as well as newly emergent ones that leverage machine learning to look at activity patterns and sense if workers might be experiencing burnout or what is now being commonly referred to as quiet quitting. You know, the hiring market is still tough, as we just discussed. And the best way to get in front of that is to start by holding on to the experienced workers that you have already. And then from an adjacent talent pools perspective, these can be both internal as well as external. And one of the hottest areas of HR technology is skills mapping. This is breaking down open positions into a set of interrelated skills and then mining pools of internal and external applicants for potential fits to non-traditional roles based on skills match. So one example is, um, we'll call it AI-driven reverse targeting in the recruiting function. So this is where a candidate may have applied for one role inside an organization that they didn't get for whatever reason, but they we can deploy algorithms that proactively mine our talent pools and say, hey, sorry that you didn't get job A, but we think you might also be a good fit for jobs B and C if you'd like to apply for those. And we let way too many candidates slip through the cracks unnecessarily. And these types of tools can really help fix those situations. Looking at data from the other side, how do you make these data-backed insights seem personal to the workers affected by them? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because when we're managing people, decisions need to be personalized and tailored. And that can be a challenge when we're making decisions at scale. Data gives us the power to do that by offering a more complete picture of the person as well as the environment in which that work is happening. You know, we've, we've developed four principles to guide the way we design solutions. Um, they must be intuitive, right? Does it help the employee manage their work faster and easier? It, is it insightful? You know, building on that data theme, are we providing greater confidence in making good decisions? Personal, as we discussed, it has to simplify the experience to show a person only what they need and relevant to their preferences. And lastly, proactive. Are we able to anticipate what comes next and surface that in a moment of need? You know, one of my, my favorite examples of this in action uh, in our world is what we call the birthday nudge. So this is something we do in our retirement services portfolio where we wish our participants a happy birthday and then proactively nudge them to think about their retirement 
and include a little insight about how ready they are for retirement and how much more ready they could be if they increase their savings rate. It's personalized with their birth date, retirement date, and savings rate. It provides insight in terms of what the expected impact on their future earnings could be. And it's proactive in terms of helping them think about their long-term goals. And since we've deployed it, we've seen our members increase their average savings rate by about 10% or more. And that's, that's huge in that world. Yeah, that really is remarkable. How can businesses remain agile in a sea of changes? Yeah, I mean, many factors, including uh, influence a, a company's workplace needs. You know, it's everything from the size of the company to where they operate geographically to their industry's technical issues. So across almost all industries and geographies, there is one constant we see, uh, and that is that most businesses self-organize around this concept of cross-functional and dynamic teams to get work done. And these teams often operate outside the traditional org structures of an organization. So for example, in my world of product and technology, you know, our organization is structured into functional groups, including product management, product development, user experience, quality assurance, not to mention marketing, sales, customer support that all have to come together successfully to build, deploy, and manage products. And that kind of team is typically not represented anywhere on the formal org structure of the business. In fact, our surveys show that uh, about teams and team dynamics in the workplace we found that at least 80% of workers identify as being a part of a team. 75% say they're actually part of two or more teams. And 67% say that at least one of their teams is not represented by the company's org structure. So how can businesses remain agile in this sea of change? Well, first it's by focusing on where the work gets done and how an org can dynamically adapt to changing needs which is on teams. And that's by making more teams as productive as their best teams and by helping their team leaders be more like their best leaders. And this is an area where, where most businesses and most HCM technologies fall short because they don't even see this hidden structure of their organization. We would call it the real structure, more so than what's on the formal org chart. And they fail to provide tools for teams and team leaders to help them manage. And our belief is that the the frontline team leader is the most important role in any organization, and yet it continues to be one of the least understood and underinvested areas in any business. And finally, Don, what can businesses expect in the next wave of HR tech advancements? Yeah, well, several things are coming together right now to change the world of HR tech. Uh, first and foremost is the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the workplace. There's been a lot of skepticism and false starts, but we're starting to see a number of use cases gain traction, starting with recruiting, as we discussed earlier, where algorithms can be deployed to find novel talent pools to source hard to fill jobs and doing things like skills matching and retargeting. And these same algorithms are now being trained to help internal associates guide and advance their careers, playing a bigger role in upskilling tomorrow's workforce with skills-based learning and career pathing. Um, second major trend is the continued focus on what we call the whole human experience of the workplace. As we talked about at the start, we're right now in the age of employees who have the upper hand in the current employment landscape. Now, there are some forecasts we've seen out there that the employment landscape might change, but we don't anticipate any going backwards on the workplace experience. And to the contrary, we see today's focus on employees' careers, financial needs, and well-being is just the tip of the iceberg, as we know that regardless of whether the hiring and unemployment landscape is tight or has slack in the system, having a happy, engaged, and productive workforce is the key to a thriving in any economy. And then lastly, building on this aforementioned trend of, of workplace experience, we continue to see technology-driven advancements in building more diverse and inclusive workplaces, leveraging many of the technologies we've been discussing, including skills matching to find capable candidates from non-traditional backgrounds, um, sentiment analysis to assess employee perceptions on the overall level of inclusiveness in the workplace, and using machine learning to assess and correct workplace equity gaps. And 
One of my favorite examples of that is a tool we deployed recently called our Pay Equity Dashboard, where we leverage machine learning models to help our clients assess where they may have gaps in pay equity. And since we turned it on last year, more than a thousand clients have accessed it. And of those, 75% have taken action by giving an, by giving an average of $5,000 or more in additional pay to over 200,000 workers that were deemed to be below benchmark from a pay equity perspective. So in total, that is more than $1.1 billion annually that has been delivered back to historically underrepresented communities, all leveraging machine learning and big data. That is quite amazing that you actually have the data to quantify the efforts that companies are putting on paper, but to be able to translate that into over a billion dollars really is remarkable, Don. We appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.